the home of cricket, where the dreams of one nation will be realised in the final of the 2019 ICC Men's Cricket World Cup. Owen Morgan carries England's hopes as the home captain. This is his story. Owen, it's pretty special to be able to turn the long room at Lords, most beautiful room in cricket, into our own little private uh, viewing cinema. So are you ready to go back and have a look at some of these moments from your life? Slightly nervous, <laughs> um, but very privileged to be here in the long room at, at my home ground where it all started for me and hopefully look back at some memories. Proper little cheeky chap if you liked your cars, weren't you? <laughs> I, I did. I can, that, that's one of the few things apart from cricket that I can remember about my childhood. I always, if we went into a shop to look at something, I would beeline straight for the, the small trucks or the lorries to jump on to drive. And I don't know where that's, that's come from. Um, but I always remember wanting to, to drive or, or memories of that. You, you mentioned there like the trucks and then of course cricket being the other one. How, how early are your memories of, of playing cricket and can you describe what that was like? Yeah, it, it probably started to look back probably about four or five years old. That was when I first started playing matches with my older brothers who were five and six years older than me at, at the time and, and playing in their teams when they didn't have 11. So I would just come on and field, normally down at fine leg or hidden where the ball wasn't going to be if I wasn't you know, filling in for somebody, I was in the nets playing with whoever would throw to me or whoever I could bowl to in the nets. Uh, but those were my earliest memories. Uh, we lived in a three bedroom terrace house and, and not for one minute did I ever think it was not big enough or too small. It, it was perfect. Uh, I'm one of six children two sisters and, and three brothers and they, they all played cricket and it was great because we had enough for a small game and where we grew up at the side of, of our house there was a, a sort of an alleyway uh, sort of concrete base that we'd just play for hours and hours and when, we, when my dad would come home from work he'd participate as well and never for a moment did he, did he ever say he was too tired or Cricket was too much. It was always about enjoyment. And I remember it being great fun. I remember bowling a lot to him. Back in the days, there was no DRS. <laughs> Out the <laughs> side street of an alley, he'd just stick his front leg in front of a good ball and leave it. Um, but great fun and fantastic memories. It's not hard to pick you out of the no. lineup. No, it? my hair was very red back then. <laughs> um, and I really do have white Celtic skin, so if you ever seen me running around, I would just go red the whole time, so I was very easy to identify. Uh, what sort of student were you? We saw you being this little cheeky kid early on. Uh, what, what were you like when you were there as a, as a student and as a person? Um, I think I was a probably a better person than a student. I really did enjoy the social aspect of school. Um, I got on well with all my teachers. Uh, the subjects that I did, I really enjoyed, but I didn't excel massively at them. Um, but sport certainly encouraged me to work harder at my school. Um, if sport wasn't there as an outlet and something to work forward to, I don't think I would have applied myself at all. It was Owen's love for sport that pushed him to develop further as a cricketer and while on exchange in South Africa in 2003, he witnessed a moment that would stay with him. I was at that game and I was um, sort of at the extra cover boundary. So we had a great view of the six being hit. 
and it was mind blowing because the the ground at the time for me was huge, and Caddick was bowling quick, and Kingsmead is notoriously bouncy, and the ball was flying through, and all of a sudden Sachin just whacked it, pulled him off a length out of the ground, and I I remember I was 16 at the time, and we were out there, I was out there on exchange playing cricket, and coincidentally the 2003 World Cup was on, and we managed to get to, to go to some of the games. But this game in particular was a beauty. Um, but seeing something like that from a, such an iconic name in the game, nothing can actually explain the feeling I had when I was there. And, and you personally, at, at that point, did you think that you had a shot of, of making it to, to be able to walk out into the middle in a World Cup and play? At that point, probably not. That was the first year, 2003 was the first year I signed with Middlesex. Probably not for one moment I thought, you know, I could be as good as these guys or compete in a World Cup. God, look at the level of disappointment. You're crushed. Oh, absolutely crushed. So to describe what's happened here, it was my ODI debut against Scotland for Ireland, and I got 99 and was run out by the number nine. And I was absolutely devastated. Look at that for a photograph. <laughs> um, I remember, I'll never forget, I clipped one to mid-wicket trying to get one for my 100 took off running and Kyle McCallum was at the non-striker's end. He sent me back and I slipped on my backside and then scrambled to try and get in and I never even made the ground. And Craig Rice just patted me on the back there. I don't even remember him patting me on the back, um, but I was devastated. Absolutely devastated at the time. It's quite funny now looking back. <laughs> Well, I'm sad that we haven't brought up any, any lingering deep seated no, trauma. No, God, no, God, it, it was well. That was an amazing thing, anyway. Obviously, to get to get 99 on your debut. And how important was that to you? Bearing in mind you'd already set out thinking you wanted to play for England. How much did it mean to you, though, to to represent Ireland? Yeah, it, it did mean a huge amount because that was the first stepping stone to where I wanted to be. And along the way, it created great opportunity for me when I couldn't get into the Middlesex first team to play in a C&G trophy or a World Cup qualifying game where the standard would be very high and if I scored runs, they would be looked at and hopefully contribute to me getting into the Middlesex first team. So opportunity for Ireland was, was brilliant. Um, I am extremely grateful for it, yeah. Do you feel English, Irish? mix of both? What is it? Yeah, so for a long time I, I probably felt a mix of both and I remember the first year I moved to England was 2003 and in the, during the 2005 Ashes, so it was two years later, for the first time in my life I, was, I actually thought, you know, I am English, I, I want to play for England, I've just grown up in a, in a different country. I, I improved my game so much by going to the IPA. Rubbing shoulders and making friends with, with Dravid, Callis, Cumblay, Stain, Voucher was a really good thing for me. And every time I've gone, I've come back a better player. <laughs> <laughs>